What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. All right. So uh, this week we're going to uh, actually look at an article that was sent to us by it was a suggestion by a subscriber yeah it was a, a suggestion by a subscriber because we have been interested in discussing some of the latest study findings yes. about the ketogenic diet and so we need to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video because this video is going to be talking about cheat days and we are not the keto well, police what? cheat days cheat days okay and we are not the keto police and how we choose to live the ketogenic lifestyle may not be the way that you do it. We are simply just going to be discussing a very current article, and this is from the University of Okanagan in British Columbia. So um, it's from March of this year, it's very recent, and it is talking about the effects of cheat days, or even a cheat day, singular, on the ketogenic diet. So that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Right. And now that you did this big disclaimer, I, I can't help but say something else. So, um, as far as cheat days, whether you cheat or not, that's on you. I mean, that's that's a decision you make. And as Sarah just said, this is really just going over a study. We didn't do this study. Nope. We didn't write this study. We didn't take part in this study. We didn't take part of it. <laughs> we didn't, uh, in fact, we didn't had never even heard of this study until somebody recommended it to us. So, uh, but if you are a person who practices cheat days, then that's that's on you. We're just giving you information. We'll link to the article. I will say that this is a because this is a recent study, as you just said, March of 2017. Uh, but there probably needs to be more studies done related to this. Of course. But, but this is just an initial trial. Well, and there's um, also a caveat that we will be discussing a little bit later into the discussion of the study that could also be a contingency factor as well, in my opinion. So once we get towards the end of the article, I'll be discussing what that is. So stay tuned. I guess I have no idea what, what, I know. You're, what you're trying to talk about. All right. I like keeping you in suspense. So uh, the name of the study, um, so this is in Science News. And uh, it's from a website called sciencedaily.com. Sorry that I'm reading all this. And it says, on the keto diet, ditch the cheat day. Just one dose of carbohydrates can damage blood vessels. So again, it was done, that this was published in March of 20, March 27, 2019. Just start talking. It says the often, often embraced cheat day is a common theme in many diets, and the popular ketogenic diet is no exception. New research says that just one 75 gram dose of glucose, the equivalent of a large bottle of soda or a plate of fries, while on a high fat, low carb diet, can lead to damaged blood vessels. Yes. Okay. So the article went on to talk about what the ketogenic diet is because not everyone reading this article may be familiar with that, although, of course, it's gained in popularity. So, the researcher said that the ketogenic diet can be very effective because once the body is in ketosis and starved for its preferred glucose, the body's chemistry changes and it begins to aggressively burn its store of fat and yes. this leads to weight loss and can even reverse the symptoms of diseases like type 2 diabetes so if you're on the ketogenic diet or you've had success with this lifestyle you probably already understand the mechanics of that what they did this study for he goes on to state he said that we were interested in finding out what happens to the body's physiology once a dose of glucose is re reintroduced so the doctoral student who was the study's first author said, since impaired glucose tolerance and spikes in blood sugar levels are known to be associated with an increased risk in cardiovascular disease, it made sense to look at what was happening in the blood vessels after a sugar hit. 
So they deliberately wanted to conduct this on people who had been practicing the ketogenic diet to see what would happen to their blood vessels after they reintroduced glucose in the form of sugar or processed carbs. So the test went as follows. The researchers recruited nine healthy young males. So number one, this is all males and had them consume a 75 gram glucose drink before and after a seven day high fat, low carb diet. The diet consisted of 70% fat, 10% carbs, and 20% protein, similar to that of a modern ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. This is the caveat area that I was talking about. There are two factors to me that could provide some questioning here. Number one, it's all males. Number two, it was people who had been practicing the ketogenic lifestyle for a week. So that's a good point. They those are the been, two. They had not been practicing right. it long. These term. are the they two just... factors that I thought might perhaps sway the results a bit. Number one, that they only studied one sex, and number two, that it was for just a span of a week that they had been on it. So obviously, their bodies had not accomplished metabolic flexibility at this point. Good it, point. Your findings might have been a little bit different if it had been studied on both sexes and if it had been studied on people who have been on the ketogenic diet for a number of years such as CJ and myself. But regardless, this is what their findings found. We were originally looking for things like an inflammatory response or reduced tolerance to blood glucose, says Durer. What we found instead were biomarkers in the blood suggesting that vessel walls were being damaged by the sudden spike in glucose. So even though these were otherwise healthy young males, when we looked at their blood vessel health after consuming the glucose drink, the results looked like they might have come from someone with poor cardiovascular health, said the researcher. It was somewhat alarming. The researchers point out that with only nine individuals included in the study, more work is needed to verify their findings, and that's what we just discussed. But the results should give those on the keto diet pause when considering a cheat day. He said, my concern is that many of the people going on a keto diet, whether it is to lose weight, to treat type 2 diabetes, or some other health reason, may be undoing some of the positive impacts on their blood vessels if they suddenly blast them with glucose, he says, especially if these people are at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease in the first place. Our data suggests a ketogenic diet is not something you should do for six days a week and take Saturdays off. So in summary, what he is saying is that they performed this test on nine healthy young males. So if you're beginning this lifestyle already at a risk, or if you're beginning this lifestyle because you have a risk or you have type two diabetes or, or are obese, then it would probably be even more dangerous for you and your blood vessels to consider bouncing back and forth between the ketogenic diet and a glucose burning diet. Thoughts? No. No? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. We do see people bounce off and on of the keto diet. Um, we hit, we get comments from people in our community yes. uh, who who bounce off and on, especially this time of year yes. uh, as the holidays are approaching. And I guess again, the whole point behind this tonight was just to talk about just some research that was done. Right. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, it's it's it was very fairly narrow. It was linear for yeah, sure. As far as who it was done on, again, these people weren't doing it long term. Well, and we are just getting into ketogenic studies for the most part. And so, and so, I guess to me, the point is, is that um, you know, keep in mind when you do keto, to do your best to stick with it. Calculate your risks. Yeah. I mean, even if, you know, this, even if it was not as severe as all that, you know, you still have to count the cost of what you may be doing. Yeah, and one of the things I guess that they don't talk about here, because this this is just kind of a one-time study, is what happened and how long did it take for those people to recover. Right. Uh, for their, and then 
if they even went back on the ketogenic and diet. And that was the next point I was yeah. going to say is whether or not these, because we don't even know, these people had, had not been on keto, they did keto just long enough to do this experiment, and then who knows what lifestyle they went back to right. after it was done. Um, so, I mean, just take all that with a grain of salt, but uh, again, as we approach kind of the holiday season, think about what you're doing. Uh, think about the, the decisions and the choices you make. Uh, we do have a video that we did maybe last year or a couple of years ago about what to do if you do cheat. Mm -hmm. We do how have to a, get yeah, back on the wagon, back I guess. Wagon. We, we do have a video and we can, we can link to that. Uh, but it is interesting that this is some scientific study uh, that was done to show that, you know, um, the cheat day may not be the best practice for your long-term health. And I know <clears throat> when I was on another diet a long time ago, it actually prescribed a cheat day, but it was not anything close to a keto diet. Because you diet. were still I was a still, glucose burner. I was burner still a glucose burner. Uh, I was still, yeah, it was not even anything close to keto. Uh, it was just a, uh, it was it was a different type of diet. So as this kind of started out, uh, and we've talked about this before too, how a lot of times, especially as keto gets pop more and more popular, a lot of the practices from other diets start to get intermingled and mixed in as, <laughs> as, as people, you know, all kinds of people come to, to the keto lifestyle or diet. And Did you find it more difficult to stick to your original diet plan when you incorporated a cheat day on this other diet plan? Uh, I'm going to say no. Uh, I found it was probably, uh, and this is probably the thought process people have even on keto, I thought it helped me to continue longer, longer term. But again, I was not doing a diet that was even close to keto. It was just, it was still, you know, eating, you know, it was pretty much a, more of a higher pro protein diet, uh, probably lower carb, higher protein, lower carb, and lower, lower fat. Mm -hmm. But the cheat day kind of helped me uh, right. at, at least feel like I could continue with the diet longer term. Um, well, and there are certain proponents of the ketogenic lifestyle who suggest things like carb ups, you know, people who are athletes and women and other things, other well, situations. Well, sure. I, yeah, I was going to say. So I don't know, you know, and, and for them, they're suggesting that you're creating metabolic flexibility, that your body has the ability to shuffle between glucose and ketones. Sure. And, and I guess I, I'm not, um, because you're right, people do practice. Um, carb cycling as a technique even on the keto lifestyle. But I will also say that a lot of times people that are practicing carb cycling are actually doing a lot of exercising as well. Right. They're, they're doing a lot they're of high endurance athletes. They may be, well not, not just high endurance athletes, but uh, I mean I can think of the people in the keto gains community, uh, which is a, you know, a big keto community where people, they're big proponents of weight lifting, heavy weight lifting and keto. And yes, and they people do practice carb cycling, but they are actually, they actually are burning a lot of calories just right. in, in general because of all the weight that they're lifting and all and the stuff that they're doing. So, so that's not what necessarily what we're talking about. We're just talking about people. You're doing keto as you know as a diet. You're trying it out, and you're just saying that once a week I'm gonna cheat and then jump back on it. We're just saying that this sign this. Particular study. particular study is saying that there's some risk to doing that and to think about that as you you know as you keep going along um, I don't think we you know we got into keto we didn't go halfway we just we got into it uh, we started and I don't know if it was because we had each other uh, but you started before I did. Yeah. So, and I'm sure there are plenty of couples even who, you know, yeah. they're off for holidays or birthdays yeah. or whatever. So we just, we just don't. I think we just, yeah, I think we kind of had the attitude that we were going to commit to this. And then, uh, and again, I've said this like a broken record. Part of the reason we do the recipes is to give 
people options so that you don't have to cheat. You don't right. have to feel like you have to cheat because... You can create a, a ketogenic food yes. that can mimic whatever you may be wanting. Yes, exactly. In, and in so a glucose world. That, that for us, may have, I'm sure that that's helped us can be able to live this longer term is because we have so many varieties of food that we know we can choose from. Uh, one of the things lately that we've been having quite often is just those uh, fat bombs. The brownie, the brownie, brownie, brownie bites. Because they're so easy to make. They're super easy to make. like one carb. And it really fills your intense chocolate yeah. need. And so that's, but that one little thing, you know, can help you get from, you know, this craving, you know, get through one craving. And, you know, if even if you just have one of those a day. And so sometimes the whole cheat day, ideal or mentality sometimes i wonder if it's just people not knowing um but it, i guess it could be fun too <laughs> there's probably some fun in your mind as well but you know we we may be a bit unusual because again we haven't i think we can count on one hand how many times we've actually probably cheated on keto we're not judging anybody but that's just the lifestyle that we've chosen and then here's some scientific evidence that's that's indicating that there may be some things you need to think about as you're making those kind of choices so again as sarah mentioned this was a pretty narrow, narrow narrowly focused study with just 10 individuals all male in good health in good health and only following for a short amount of time right so but it is something to think about yeah something to make you go hmm i wonder yeah so as we get closer to the holidays, we're gonna be doing like special something. <laughs> I'm just the guy who eats and films. Yeah, you're just, uh, you're just the taste tester. I'm just the taste tester dude who's grumpy. But anyway, we're gonna be doing a special thing. I'll let you, you take that away. I am going to be doing a series in the month of October, focusing on some Thanksgiving and seasonal themed recipes both desserts and main dishes so yeah. Yeah. there'll be two main dishes and then two desserts during the month of october focusing around the thanksgiving holiday so month that of november yes i'm sorry yeah. we're in october and yeah. it's almost over <laughs> november. november going into november so thanksgiving themed style recipes so that you have some options to still celebrate to still have people come over to yeah. take to parties to take to dinners if you would like to remain on the ketogenic lifestyle through the upcoming holiday season so yeah. that is what i'm going to be doing during the month of november and so. the thing that's interesting about this is this is be what our third thanksgiving on keto four i don't know I don't know. This will be third. Our third? Okay. <laughs> so this will be our third. I'm bad with just time. and. I, um, I started keto in 2016. Okay. So yeah. this is our third Thanksgiving on yes. keto. And we have enough recipes, I can say this, on our channel and on our blog that you probably could have an entirely keto. You could have a smorgasbord. You could have entirely <laughs> in keto, an entirely keto Thanksgiving no problem at all mm -hmm. yes it may be a little bit uh, i'm gonna say it might be a little bit different i don't i don't know if it's necessarily more work it just may be hey thanksgiving just, food and christmas food too is time intensive yeah. any of your holiday meals i mean you know but, a turkey's not just like a pop it in the oven kind of thing i mean we've got you know this what cauliflower dressing that that is we made is a couple requested years ago. every year and yeah the you know our non-carb our, I'm sorry, our carb eating folks love it just as much as, yeah. um, although a lot of people in your family have gone back and forth with keto as well. Yes. So, I mean, we, so don't get us wrong. We actually, we understand people that go back and forth. Um, this is not a, a uh, an intervention. We're not, new. we're not here to judge you. We're new. simply, we're simply interested in discussing ketogenic studies because they're now starting to come out with some regularity because this lifestyle is becoming more yeah, popular. We, so that's basically what we're doing this for is discussing it 
so that we can all discuss it with each other. Maybe you're having success with, you know. That's true. We don't know. We're simply basing it on what we are currently living as a lifestyle and the information that we are finding with the different studies about the ketogenic diet. Right. And so that's why we're discussing it. Yeah, but like I said, I know we've probably got enough recipes on our channel already and on our blog already where you could have a completely keto, a fully keto, fully keto Thanksgiving, meal. Thanksgiving. I mean, we're going to have turkey. We're ham. probably going to have ham. I, I mean, those are just standard and that's neither, I guess the only thing that would make a ham not keto is if you have it full of uh, like all the glazes all the glazed stuff. Stuff. but you know now you could use sucre and gold as the brown yeah sugar substitute so uh, to glaze i don't know ham, who's going to be so. responsible this year for the ham at uh, at thanksgiving because we're going to go over to your sister's house mm -hmm. but but so we're going to have turkey we'll have i think i'm going to bring the sausage puffs ham. As an we'll do the sausage puffs mm -hmm. we've got I'm like, going to be making dessert, I know. Some kind of pumpkin, there's, not, there's some kind of pumpkin cheesecake thing out there already. Yeah, that's not what I'm bringing From a couple of years ago. But anyway, you know, again, part of why, the part of the reason we do what we do is to give you options so that you don't have to feel like you have to have a cheat day. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, because we, we, we practice keto long term as a lifestyle and we know it can be done um, but we just again just wanted to share information with you so anyway i think we've beat that enough and we are done for tonight we hope that you have a great rest of the week and we will talk at you later bye-bye peace peace